Today is part one of a two-part series going over some of my favorite tips for Windows. Stay tuned. Is your copy of Windows 10 unactivated? Well, it doesn't have to be because with today's sponsor, VIP SCD Key, you can get a valid Windows 10 license for under $20. Stop dealing with that stupid watermark on the desktop The a valid license for Windows 10. Also, with an activated copy of Windows 10, you can upgrade to Windows 11 for free. Just go to the link in the description below and pick up a valid Windows 10 license key. During checkout, use the code CYBERCPU for a 25% discount. Once you have your key, go to your activation settings in Windows 10 and click on the link that says Change Product Key. Enter the product key you just purchased and hit Activate. Now you don't have to deal with that stupid watermark that come with running an unactivated copy of Windows 10. Now, on with the video. So, I decided I wanted to do a Windows 10 tips video because, you know, We've been spending a lot of time in Windows 11 and leaving people with Windows 10 out in the cold. But you know what? Most of these tips should work on Windows 11 too, but this video is going to be specifically tailored to Windows 10. Also, I haven't tested all of these tips in Windows 11, so let me know in the comments below if any of these don't work. So I sat down getting prepared for this video, just writing a list of tips that I like to use on a regular basis. Unfortunately, that list got long really quick. So I'm breaking this video up into two videos. Today is going to be part one, and then next week is going to be part two. This video is going to have six tips for Windows 10. And also, stay tuned to the end of the video because I have a bonus tip for you. Some of these tips you may be aware of, and some of them I've actually covered in videos in the past, but hopefully there's something here that's new that you don't know about. Make sure you mention in the comments below which of these tips you didn't know about, and let me know if there's anything that I left out. So, let's get to it. Okay, the first one we're going to start with here is fairly basic, and I should have shown you this one in the past. In fact, I know I've shown you this one in the past, but if you haven't seen any of my other videos, then this might be new to you too. So if you click on Start, go ahead and search for Control Panel. And then once you open up Control Panel, you want to go up to the search box here and just search for Power. And then from Power, click on Power Options. And then from there, as you can notice, right now we're currently using a balanced power plan. And you can switch that to a power saver. However, what I recommend is switching over to the bottom here where it has the hidden plans and switch it over to high performance. Now, for whatever reason, if you don't have a high performance power plan here, you can create a power plan. And to do that, all you got to do is just click right here on create power plan. And then from this list right here, you want to make sure to select high performance. And you can name this whatever you want. You can leave the default name or you can name it whatever you want. And then you hit the next button and then you tell it what you want the display to do when it's in this power plan. If you want, you can turn the display off or you can't. It's up to you. It's whatever you want to do. And then hit the create button and that'll create your custom plan. And this one will be the high performance power plan, even though it doesn't say it. Because remember, you can name it whatever you want. Now, this one right here may seem like a really basic tip. However, this really does improve your performance in Windows. In fact, sometimes dramatically. But if you're using this on a mobile device, like a notebook or something like that, it can affect your battery life. So just keep that in mind. Also, there's one other setting you can change to help you in this endeavor as well. Let me show you. Okay, so what you do is click on the Start button, click on Settings, and then from the Settings menu, just go ahead and search for Power right here, and go to Power and Sleep Settings. And if you notice at the bottom right here where it says Performance and Energy, it's set right in the middle. However, if you, if you take this and drag it all the way to the side, you can switch the power mode over to Best Performance. So while we're in Settings, there's one other thing I want to show you too. And this is a setting that'll kind of make your Windows 10 computer a little more Mac-like. And what you do is you click on the Home button, and then you go into Accounts. And then from Accounts, you want to go over to Sign-in Options right here at the side. And then from Sign-in Options, if you scroll down right here where it says Restart Apps, and what this does is it automatically restarts your apps when you when you sign out or you turn off your computer. So if you were to turn this on and you were to have some program open, like say you had Chrome open and you just had it minimized, then when you turn your computer back on, it'll restart the same apps that you had open the last time you had it turned on. So this is a pretty handy setting to have if you use the same kind of applications every time you turn your computer on. However, this is one that I personally leave disabled on my own computer, but it is a nice feature to have. 
So let's move on to the next one. Okay, so this next tip, I use this one constantly, and it's a pretty basic tip also, but if you didn't know about it, then this is definitely gonna change the way you use your computer in the future. And that's mounting DVD ISOs or any kind of CD ISO automatically within Windows. You used to need a program to do this, but since Windows 10, you've been able to mount ISOs directly within the operating system itself. And this will actually save you a lot of blank disks, in fact, I don't even have a DVD drive in my computers anymore. So what you do is you just go to the ISO file or the disk image and you just double click on it and there you go, it's now mounted. And if you go into this PC, you'll see that it has a virtual DVD drive that it's mounted that image to. And you can use this for essentially any kind of CD or DVD that you want. Now, this tip right here comes in handy, especially if you have older games that require a CD. You can take that CD, rip it down to an ISO, and just mount it in Windows, and it'll act like it is a real CD. However, this might not get around certain copy protections for some games. So if you have a game that uses some kind of copy protection, this might not work for you. But it's a good shot, just give it a shot and see what happens. It's better than just not being able to play those older games anymore. But it definitely does come in handy when you're going to upgrade Windows or you wanna be able to mount an ISO for whatever reason you want. Anyway, hopefully this tip is helpful. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, so the next tip I'm gonna show you, this one is extremely basic, but it comes in really handy. Let's say you have a bunch of windows open, and you know, you just wanna get down to your desktop. You don't wanna close all these windows, you just wanna get down to your desktop. What you can do is if you go down to the clock here, you'll see this little sliver on the side right here, right to the right-hand side of the clock. If you click on that, it automatically minimizes everything on the screen. However, if you click on it again, it brings everything back the way it was before you clicked on it. So moving right along, to go to the next tip, this one right here regards the start menu itself. And this one here is another really basic one, but it's one that comes in really handy. And that is your ability to customize your start menu in pretty much any way that you want to. So all of these tabs right here are customizable. You can take them, you can move them around to different positions, or you can always add new stuff. So if you had another application, like say you have the calculator here, you can always drag it over and drop it on the list right here. But if you want, you can make the icon smaller as well. And all you have to do is right click, go to resize, and then hit small. Or you can also make them big, just like I have the weather right here. But if you right click, go to resize, and you can also make it large as well. However, some icons really don't have much use in their large form, like they do with the weather right here. Some of them are just bigger icons. So if you ever wanna remove an icon from your start menu, all you gotta do is right click and hit unpin from start. And another thing also is if you want a little bit more real estate in your start menu, you can come over to the edge right here and you can drag it over and you can make your start menu larger as well. And that way you can drag stuff over and pin it on the other side. And you can essentially bring this to all the way to the other side of the screen if you want, at least up to that far. And you can also drag this down if you wanna make the start menu a little bit lower as well. So it does definitely come with some really good customizable features. So customizing the start menu is definitely basic, but I showed you that tip in order to show you the bonus tip, which is coming up next. And that's the ability to back up your start menu's configuration. So if you wanna take the configuration you have in your start menu and move it to another computer, or you have it set up in a certain way that you wanna be able to back up if you ever have to reload Windows, then let me show you how to do it. Okay, this process is actually really easy, but one of the primary ways that I use this is because I set up the start menu in a certain way when I set up new computers, and I like to be able to use that same uniform configuration every time I set up a computer. So all of the placement of all the different icons and stuff like that, I like them to be placed in a certain way when I set up Windows for the first time. So to do that, all you have to do is click on your start menu, type in regedit, hit yes to the user account control. And clearly I've already been in here for something else. So we're gonna go all the way up to the top here. And then we wanna go to current user and then go into software, then go into Microsoft, then go into Windows. So we're gonna scroll down, everything's alphabetical here. And then from Windows, we wanna go into current version. And then we wanna go into cloud store right here. And then you wanna go into just store. Then you wanna go into cache. 
And right here where it says default account, this is the one that we're interested in and all of these different keys that are related to it. So what you're gonna, what you're gonna wanna do is right click on this one right here and go down and click export. And then you can save this anywhere you want. I'm gonna throw mine on the desktop and I'm gonna name this start menu and then go ahead and hit save and it should save your registry backup right here. And then once you do that, you can go ahead and close this. And then the next thing you wanna do is open up Windows Explorer. And then from Windows Explorer, you wanna click on percentage sign, local app data, percentage sign, forward slash, Microsoft, backslash rather, Windows, backslash, shell and hit enter. And then once you go in here, you're gonna see this one XML file called default layouts. And what you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and copy this. Don't move it out, you wanna copy it. And then paste it wherever you put this registry file. And then from these two files right here, you can rebuild your start menu on another system. Essentially, all you have to do is take this default layout XML document and drop it into that same folder that we were just in, and then run this registry file in order to add it to the registry. Once you do that, it's gonna ask you if you wanna add it to the registry, you hit yes, and it'll do that, it'll import those keys. And at that point, you just restart your computer, and when you reboot, your start menu will be configured in the way that you had it saved before. Now, if you want, there also is another way that you can do this to make it a little bit more streamlined because if you're doing this on a regular basis like I am, I actually made a little batch file to do this for me. So if we go over here, here's my batch file right here. And essentially all I named this is doit.cmd. And you gotta make sure to give it either a CMD or a BAT file extension. And I'll show you how to do that. But essentially all it is is echo off tells it not to display the um, commands in the, in the window that opens up. It just essentially turns off the verbose mode. So it'll, It'll just show you the output of the commands, not the commands themselves. And then right here, you have X copy, forward slash S, forward slash capital Y, dot, and then this is essentially the default layouts XML. So this is this file right here. And then from there, it tells it where to copy it to, and this is the path that I showed you to go to before. And then after it does that, then it goes ahead and imports the registry. And all you do is use the reg command, import is the option, and then at this point, it's named defaultaccount.reg, and that's just what I have it named on my thumb drive. And then I use the pause in order to stop the command from running so it'll sit there and wait for me to do some kind of input. If you wanna create the same batch file that I have here, all you have to do is open up Notepad. So go ahead and type the start menu, type Notepad, open up a new Notepad window, and then go ahead and copy all of this that I'm gonna have down in the comments below, and then paste them into a new Notepad document. And then what you have to do is go to File, and then hit Save As, and then make sure on the Save As, where it says Text Document right here, you click down and go to All Files. And then you can name this anything you want. I name mine Do It. So if you do Do It, just like that, and then make sure you type period, CMD, and that'll essentially make it a batch file. From there, go ahead and hit the save button, and you'll see right there, you have a batch file. And then you can run that batch file in order to modify your start menu. And essentially, all you would do is double click on it, and it does just like this. It copies the default layout to the folder, and then unfortunately, it aired out when it went to import the registry key because I have it named differently. And then it pauses so you can push any key to continue. So. If you make sure that on these files right here where it says default layout XML, that one shouldn't change because that's gonna be the name of the file that you copied from this folder right here. However, make sure that the registry file is named correctly. Like in this case, I just have it named default account reg when in the video here, I named it start menu reg. So just make sure that you modify this line right here to reflect what you named your registry file. So that's just a fraction of the tips that I use on a regular basis. And you know, some of these tips really are time savers, like being able to save the settings from a Windows 10 start menu has made it way faster setting up a customer system with Windows 10. But if you have any tips that you think I should have included or you just wanna let me know about, then make sure you mention them in the comments below. Also, stay tuned for next week when I'll cover some more tips for Windows 10. 
But in the meantime, if you like tips for Windows, then check out this video where I cover 10 must-know tips for Windows 10 and 11. That video actually has some really good tips in it. But as always, you guys have a great day.